a series that we began a couple of weeks back, and it's on exposing the false prophets. First couple of verses are not going to be on your screen, but the Lord brought them to my heart this morning. It says a time will come when people will not endure the sound doctrines according, but according to their own desires, become, they're going to become itching ears, and they will turn away from the truth and turn aside to fables. The Bible tells us there's going to be a time that's going to come. And I will tell you, the time has come Amen. that people are not going to be able to endure sound doctrine. They're not going to be in, able to endure the correction of God's Word. They're not going to want to accept what the Bible says about true salvation, about true sin, sin and about true change. And they're going to want their own desires more than they're going to want the truthfulness of God's Word. They're going to have itching ears. And those itching ears are going to turn them not to the truth, but those itching ears are going to turn them to fables. Going to turn them to things that they want to hear that just tickle the ears. Nothing that brings conviction. Only stuff that people want to hear. And there's another verse that says when that happens that savage wolves will come. Savage wolves are going to come. Let me tell you this. Savage wolves have come. They have come. And what do they do? The verse goes on and says that they will come and they will not spare the flock. And they're going to preach and speak diverse things, drawing many people into their diverse preaching or teaching. Those wolves are going to come. And those wolves, I believe, are coming very, very strongly today for people. And I will tell you something. We always think when I say that, or other people say that, that they're coming for people that don't truly know Jesus. I'll also tell you that those wolves are coming for people that think that they know Jesus. I believe this with all of my heart. I believe, as Billy Graham said years ago, that eight out of ten people that truly think that they know Jesus as Lord and Savior do not know Jesus. I believe that. You say, Pastor, are you really saying that 80% of the people that are in churches today that say they know Jesus don't really know Jesus? And I will say yes and amen to that. I say that because the Bible does not give us a percentage, but the Bible says that you shall know true Christians by their fruits. That you will know true Christians by their wanting to give over their lives to the Lord and let the Lord truly be Lord of somebody's life. Folks, that is a strong, strong commitment. There are a lot of people that come to church. There are a lot of people that come to the Point Church right here, right now, that may be here this morning and may be watching us online, that come, they come maybe two out of three times a month. Maybe you're here four out of times a month. I don't know. But I will say this, you are going through the motions but when it comes to God being the real God and the real Lord of your life, He is not. You are a fan. You are not a true disciple. You say, Pastor, that's strong. It's very strong, but it's also very true. We are in a day and age, folks, where everybody in this congregation had better really realize whether you are a true Christian or you're not. And I mean it. I mean you need to self-examine yourself. This Bible tells us that many one day are going to stand before the Lord. And they're going to say, Lord, Lord, I've known you. I've gone to the Point Church. I gave a little bit of money when it came around. Not a tithe, but I gave. Or maybe I did give a tithe. Or maybe I worked in the church a little bit when it was convenient. 
Lord, I did this, I did this. And the Lord's going to look at people. And he's going to say, depart from me because I never, ever knew you. Are you serious, Pastor? I'm as serious as I possibly can be. I mean it. I see it, folks. I see it not only in this church, but I see it in a lot, a lot of other churches. People that are going through the motions. Jesus is not the top priority in your life. No, he's a third or fourth or fifth, or maybe he's not even in the top ten. You are just going through the motions. You don't really care about giving him the lordship of your life. You sing the songs. You raise the hands. You get a little wiggle once in a while. But listen, Jesus is really not the Lord of your life. He's really not the Savior. You say, well, I walk the aisle. Walking the aisle doesn't make you a Christian. You say, I prayed the prayer, Pastor. A lot of people pray the prayer. A lot of people don't mean the prayer. You know why? Because if you mean the prayer, your life's going to show it. Amen. And you say, Pastor, we're really getting off to a tough start this morning. Let me say this to you. The Bible says that people are going to turn to people that love to preach the things that they love to hear, that are not convicting. Instead of warning people about their sins and turning from their sins, false prophets are going to tell people that you can be at peace with your sins. You know why? Because after all, God is full of grace. God is full of love. And you know something? Hey, you don't have to change. God loves you just the way that you are. That is absolutely false. You cannot be happy with your sins if you're a true Christian. It's impossible. The Bible tells us that if you're truly a Christian, when you sin, the Holy Spirit is going to automatically convict you. The most unhappiest person that is a part of the Point Church this morning is not a person that is going to hell. The most uncomfortable person in the Point Church this morning is a Christian that has sin in their life that can't wait to get to Jesus and ask him to forgive them of those sins. Sin makes you uncomfortable. And if sin does not make you uncomfortable this morning, if you are comfortable living the way that you've always lived, and if Jesus is just something that you add to your life once in a while, you are not on your way to heaven, you're on your way to hell. Now you won't hear that in most churches. But I have pledged to you ever since I've been pastor here for almost 13 years now that we preach the truth of God's word. That's the truth. But people that are false prophets are giving people today a lot of false senses of security. They think they know Jesus. They think they know Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. If you know Jesus again, your lifestyle is going to show it. A measure of a church, a lot of false prophets say, is in the numbers. A lot of people say, well, I have this many that comes to church. I have this many that comes to church. You know, I know that numbers are in the Bible. But let me tell you something. God is not concerned about numbers here at this church. I would love to see every seat full in this church. I would. And I long for the day. But it doesn't surprise me when I look around today and see some empty seats. And does that mean that we're not doing a great job here at this church? Absolutely no. Does it mean that today we're living in the last days? Absolutely yes. Does it mean today that some people just can't stand the truth and are not here today, that have left and gone to another truth, that may, another church that makes them happy and their sin? Absolutely true. I will tell you the mark of a great church. The mark of a great church is not numbers. The mark of a great church is is, is it producing godly lives? And I will tell you that this church, measuring itself on that statement, is very, very successful. I could stop here this morning. I could point out people over here, over here, over here. I could call you by name. I could call some of you up by families. And I would say, I will say this, 
that these folks right here, this one, this one, this one, this one, a year ago, you were not the same. A year ago, you were lost. A year ago, you found Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your life has changed. Your marriage has changed. Your family has changed. The way that you walk has changed. Your desires have changed. Your appetites have changed. You know the reason why? Because you have truly received Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. I'm here to say this morning, there is nothing wrong with the gospel. There is nothing wrong with the full power and the full strength of God's word. Absolutely nothing. The problem is not with the gospel. The problem is with the people that, won't, that don't want to hear the gospel. Amen. Amen. And the problem is with, with a lot of false pastors today and false prophets that couldn't preach a truthful sermon if you paid them. Salvation is not believing the facts. It is claim, in claiming eternal life. Real salvation is turning from a sinful lifestyle and committing to the lordship of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. That is truth. And if you're not doing that today, if you're not committing your life to the lordship of the Lord, if the priority in your life is not to love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, you have a false salvation this morning. And you better receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior before it's too late. Amen? Amen. Boy, you see, Pastor, we're off to a great start. That's all introduction. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. See the serpent. The devil has been at this a long time. He started out in the Garden of Eden. Look what he said. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He was the shrewdest. He's still the shrewdest. He is somebody that will never tell you when he's coming. He's somebody that is like someone that cloaks their self as an angel of light. He's someone that cloaks himself as a, as a messenger of the truth, but he's far from it. Did God actually say, he said to Eve, did God actually say you shall not eat of any fruit tree in the garden? What was that? That was a direct lie combined with just enough truth to give it plausibility. What does Satan do today through false prophets, through false pastors, through false people on television and radio? They give you just enough truth to get you to listen. But it's a lie. But they don't give you the whole lie. They only give you a half a lie, they say, because they make it just enough there to get your attention to make it plausible. You see what he did to Eve? He put a question in her mind. And he made her think, did God really say that? I mean, you think God said that. But listen, did God really say that? Today is the same way. Pastors that are false, false prophets say, did God really say that? Oh, come on. He's a graceful God. Come on. He's a loving God. Do you think that God, a graceful God and a loving God, would say things like that? Oh, come on. You know better. What is Satan doing? He's given people just enough to put a little doubt in their mind, to make it a little bit plausible. Well, maybe that pastor did tell me wrong at the point. Well, maybe that pastor that I used to listen to when I was growing up in church that I, I received Jesus, maybe they, he did tell me something was wrong. Maybe things have changed a little bit. After all, look at all the years that have passed. After all, look at the world today, 2024. Whoa! Maybe what I've been believing, maybe what I've been taught, maybe what my parents told me, my grandparents told me, maybe it's a little bit outdated. Maybe we need to change things up a little bit. That's what Satan's saying. 
At 2005, there was a cancer patient named Georgia Hayes. And it says that she won a $2.2 billion court settlement against the pharmacist and the pharmaceutical company that had diluted her chemotherapy drugs with water. Can you imagine? In the process, she had lost her best chance to live and recovery. While $2.2 billion is a lot of money, it's little comfort when you don't have long to live. That pharmaceutical company did the unspeakable. That person that was peddling that drug did the unspeakable. What could be worse, Pastor? What could be worse than taking a cancer medicine that is supposed to help people recover from the worst part of cancer and to dilute it? What could be worse than doing something like that? I'll tell you something that's worse than that. I'll tell you, it's divert, div, diluting the truth of God's Word. Yeah, you dilute cancer medicine. That can bring about death as far as this world is concerned. But people that dilute the gospel, the pure gospel of God's Word, people that dilute that, folks, they are peddling a gospel that not only, hey, hey, not only will people not have the life they need to have here, but more importantly, it'll send you straight to hell. And you say, wait a minute, they don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Don't come to me and say, Pastor, they don't know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And people say, well, Pastor, you shouldn't talk about those people. Let me say this to you. If somebody was diluting your cancer medicine, would you not want somebody to speak up for you? I will say today that there are people that diluting the gospel that this pastor has preached for 46 years. That I've seen thousands of people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I know that that gospel is the only thing to keep people out of hell. So I'm going to raise my voice. I'm going to say it. And if you don't like it, you can leave. I love you, but hit the road. Amen? I love you, that's why I'm telling you. You say, Pastor, not a lot of pastors would say that. Well, a lot of pastors ain't got no guts. And a lot of pastors ain't got no spine. I'm not trying to elevate myself and say, I'm such a great and wonderful guy, but I will tell you this. If I was on the old Skyway years ago and that half fell... And that man was standing out there waving his hands like that, trying to stop cars from going over the side. He wouldn't be much of a person if he just sat there and watched cars go off the side like that. Amen? Amen. He was warning them about death. I am warning you about death. That's what I'm doing. And I'm sharing it with you. And I know I'm going to offend some people when I do this. I know that when I got started. When the Lord shared with me to share this series, I said, what about those people that follow this person? What about those people that watch that movie? What about, you know what? It doesn't really matter. The Word of God is the Word of God. And I'm going to share it with you because I love you. But you know what? The devil has enlisted people today. In fact, he's handpicked them. We will, we will call them pharmaceutical reps. <laughs> pharmaceutical reps. And what are they peddling? They're peddling a diluted gospel. They're peddling a gospel that won't do nothing for you. Amen. That's what they're doing. They're watering it down. They give you just enough truth, but not the whole truth. They give you just enough truth to send you to hell. That's what they do. Folks, they bring you in. They bring you in through a lot of music and a lot of, of smoke and lights and they bring you in by a lot of Shazam and all that stuff. They bring you, they make it popular. I just talked to a girl the other night, matter of fact. In fact, she was at Cove K and she shared with me, she was our waitress, that she went to a church. I'm not going to name the church, but she shared with me that she's not going to that church anymore. And I said, why aren't you going? She said, listen, 
They had great music. I loved their music. It was full of power. It was this, it was that. But the pastor did not preach the truth. But if I was to tell you the name of that church today, and if we were to go over there today, right here, right now, you would see that church full. But what are they doing? They are listening to a deluded gospel. God help that pastor. Amen. Why don't people want a straight, truthful answer anymore, Pastor Branson? Because it makes them feel uncomfortable. You know, when my mom and daddy told me the truth about me, it didn't make me feel good sometimes. Amen. Amen. I don't know about your mom and daddy, but when they told me that I did something wrong, I didn't like it. It made me uncomfortable. I was fine eating ice cream on the sofa. I was fine eating popsicles. Amen. But when they took my ice cream away, when they took my popsicles away, when they told me that was something was wrong and it made me uncomfortable, I didn't like it. We ain't changed. Nobody likes to be told something face to face that makes them feel bad. Amen. You know, there's cert, a, such a thing as, as Nathans in people's lives. A Nathan is somebody that David, that Nathan came to David and, David and Nathan told David how it was. I've asked certain people in my life, not many. I've asked certain people that walk with God to be my Nathan. You know what they do? They come to me and they tell me when something is not right in my life. They tell me something that I don't want to hear. Why? Because I'm human. I want to always know that Pastor Branson's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I always want to know that I'm the best pastor, that I'm the best husband, that I'm the best father, that I'm the best friend anybody could ever have. But when people are walking with God, and they're praying for me. And they're, they hear the Holy Spirit shares with them something that they need to say to me. They say it to me. I was at breakfast with somebody several years ago. I never ever thought this person would ever say this to me. But this person, I could tell they were nervous. I mean, who can be nervous eating a nice omelet and a whole bunch of good old home fries? Amen. That gum, I wasn't nervous. I was enjoying my breakfast. But this person was nervous, and I knew they were nervous. And I said to this person after a while, I said, what's on your mind? You're not yourself. He you said, well, Pastor, God wants me to say something to you, and I don't know how to say it. And I said, well, is it good or is it bad? He said, you ain't going to like it. I said, are you walking with Jesus? He said, yeah, I'm walking with Jesus. I'm right. You right with Jesus? Yeah. I says, go ahead and tell me what it is. And he told me. You know what? I didn't like it. <laughs> and you know what? He said, you like it? I said, no, I didn't like it at all. I said, but I'm still paying for your breakfast. <laughs> you know why? And I looked right at him. I said, not many people have had the guts to say that to me. But you know what? He was dead on. He was right. It was something that I needed to hear. And my respect for that individual has gone sky high ever since then. You know why? Because that person told me the truth. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel comfortable. But it's what I need to hear. People today, listen, they don't want to hear it. They want to feel like everything's going right. But folks, listen. Listen. Part of being a Christian is the Holy Spirit inside of you to tell you when things ain't right. Amen. People today, they don't want to hear that. They want to run their own lives. They want to make their own decisions. They want to make their own way in life as they see fit. They want to be free to live. They don't want to be, they don't want to be living by some outdated book like the Bible. I mean, hey. And you know something? Satan could not be happier than to give them exactly what they want, and he's giving it to them. They bring out these slick people, and all they're doing is all they're doing is giving people candy-coated, diluted gospel. That's it. Instead of turning away from your sins, <clears throat> they say, "Just be at peace with who you are." 
Just be at peace with who you are. Didn't God create you because, you know, God's so full of grace, God's so full of love. He expects you to change? No. Why, did you, why should you improve on your creation that God has given you? Because you know what? God created you to be so special, so wonderful, so great. What they're trying to do is they're trying to fill a hole in your life that's called, called God as a God hole in your life with a bunch of junk. Amen. Instead of denying yourself, taking up your cross like the Bible says and following me, they say, hey, listen, you need, the real key to your happiness is what? Making sure that you're taken care of. Don't worry about that. It's all about you. You want it? Call 1-800-JESUS. That's what it's amounted to. If you want it in life, Hey, you just get up and you call 1-800-JESUS. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to give you all the desires of your heart. You just name it. You claim it. You know what? When you go and buy a used car, you all know the jokes about used car salesmen, right? But when you got, go buy a used car, there's such a thing called a Carfax. What is a Carfax? A Carfax will tell you the whole history of that car. It will probably tell you a lot of things that that salesman's not going to tell you. Why? Because that salesman wants to sell you that car. He doesn't want to show you the picture or the, or the paper that shows you all the defects of what he's trying to sell you. These false prophets today, these false pastors today, ask them to show you a Bible facts. Amen? Amen? Call them up on their 800 number and say, I just watched your broadcast. Why don't you send me a Bible facts on what you just said? Because I want to tell you that I have charted what you just said on your broadcast by the Bible, and I've got news for you. You have got some defects in what you just said. Amen? Amen. But there's so many people today that listen and just because of the way the person looks, just because of the amount of people that this person preaches to or the books that they've written or the broadcast network or what they're on or something like that, they take it all for granted. It's like somebody watching the Faith Channel on television called Up Faith. What could be wrong with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like people watching the Christian broadcast network. <laughs> They're not Christians, a lot of them. I'm not condemning the whole network. I'm saying some of them ain't got no business being on there. Amen. But I take it for granted because, after all, it's on the Christian broadcast network. Let me say, remember, Satan comes, he doesn't announce that things are false on those things, on those channels, those movies, those shows you watch. He doesn't announce it. No. He keeps it in the background. He doesn't want anybody to know. CBN Network a lot of times. Christian Broadway, while we're on there, people listen to Kenneth Copeland. They listen to Paula White. They listen to T.D. Jakes. They listen to Benny Hinn. They listen to Robert Tilton. And, of course, we can't live out, leave out Joel Osteen. He'd be offended. But listen... People listen to people like that. And they say it must be great because it's on the Christian Broadcast Network. We're going to tackle some of those in the coming weeks and you're going to be amazed. Amen? Amen. They're peddling a deluded gospel. Christianity Today, a magazine that Pastor Brian and I get, they're so nice they send it to us for no charge. Isn't that amazing? Guess what? They need to stop sending it because it's a bunch of garbage. This month they were trying to debate in the magazine, whether an alternative lifestyle was true or false. And they really couldn't figure it out. I would say to them, let me be the editor and let me just figure it out right here and right now. Amen? Amen. You say, well, Pastor, no, it's truth. Where'd you find that? Christianity Today. Well, that ought, that ought's got to be right. It's not right. It's wrong. 
All right. Now we're getting into the message. <laughs> let, me give you, let me give you three big lies. I could give you more, but let me give you three big lies. That the prosperity gospel, we're going to call it prosperity gospel, doesn't re really lead to prosperity, but they say if you follow these steps, you'll be prosperous. All right? Here it is. Three big lies they share. Number one, Christians have a right to the blessings of health and wealth. Sounds good. Just have positive confessions. Just think positively. Just let positive words or thoughts come out of your life of faith and sow financial seeds and you will have the blessings of God. Now that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, pretty good. Who would not want to have perfect health until they're a thousand years old, right? Sounds good. Who would not like to have a million dollars in a bank? Sounds good to me. Bring it on, Pastor. I like that kind of God. Well, who wouldn't? The promise of health and wealth is very appealing. If there's anybody here today that don't think that's appealing, you need to go to a special person. Everybody wants that, especially a lost person. Hey, they love something like that. Oh, is that what God's about? Amen. Count me in, Pastor. I'm going to be all about that God that wants to give me health and wealth. I mean, goodness. Hey, hey, you can have heaven right here, and you can have it right now. You can have money. You can have pleasures. Thinking about that vacation that you want. Oh, just dream about it. It's going to be yours. Just start talking about it. Let your thoughts go. Oh, I feel like I am over in Hawaii. I feel like I'm out there in a lounge chair. I feel like people have gotten home and all them hula hoops all around me. And people are coming and they're giving me chicken. And they're giving me steak and stuff. And waiting on me. Oh, pastor, I'm telling you, I just can't wait. And you know I got great health. I got a six pack. I mean, I'm just doing fantastic I feel fantastic. I tell you, Pastor, this is just absolutely wonderful. Well, guess what? There ain't no truth in it. Amen. Amen. Truth is, you ain't got a six-pack. You never will. Amen. <laughs> truth is, you ain't never going to Hawaii. All right? You're going to sit there in your little chair that you bought from Walmart, and you're going to enjoy out there at San Key, and that's about the best it's going to get. Nobody's going to come to you and give you little hors d'oeuvres of chicken and steak no, you're going to get you a little thing from Subway and you're going to make the best of it. Amen. Amen. But I will tell you this. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, sand key's fine. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior and if that's what he wants for you, that chair from Walmart's going to find, find, sound just like it, fit just like a good old Chase recliner that you can pay 500 bucks for. And I will tell you this. If he's really in it, that Subway sandwich, even though most of it is lettuce, it doesn't have much meat in there, that's why I don't go, is going to taste pretty good to you people that love vegetarian food. Amen. What am I saying? I'm saying that if you're right with Jesus, you're happy wherever God wants to put you. Amen. Amen. Well, I ain't never seen the Eiffel Tower. Well, guess what? Look it up on the internet. Amen. I thought the Leaning Tower of Pisa was a lean, until my son corrected me the other day. I said, have you ever been to see the Leaning Tower of Pizza? And he said, Dad, what'd you say? I said, the Leaning Tower of Pizza. He said, Dad, that's not called the Leaning Tower of Pizza. He's called the Leaning Tower of Pizza. I said, well, I knew I wasn't going to go see it. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all get that a little later on. But listen, people say, tell me more, Pastor. Tell me more. It's appealing. Boy, I love that kind of God. Well, you know what? Satan is amazing that he used those temptations of health and wealth against Jesus. You say, did he? Absolutely. Look over at Matthew chapter 4. For me. I'm going to teach you all something this morning. Oh, when Jesus was tempted, first two temptations he used was health and wealth. Look at this. Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 and 3. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very what? Hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. The very first temptation he gave Jesus was the temptation of health. Jesus was very, very hungry. And he says, You want to be healthy? 
You want to have some instant stuff in your, in your body? I know that you're tired. I know that you're weak. Why don't you just take those stones right there? Why does you just don't make them into bread? You know, that is going along with health. And that was a temptation that, that the devil gave to Jesus. And you know what people do? They piggyback on that, some prosperity pastors. And here's what they tell you. It is not God's will for you to ever be sick. And if you just think positive thoughts, you never will be sick. And you know something? If you're sick or something's wrong with you, something's wrong with you spiritually. Because if something wasn't wrong with you spiritually, you would not be sick. They take a verse, and here's the verse they use. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Look what it is. And you you watch this now. This is what they say. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are what? Healed. Healed. They take that verse. They flip it around. And they say, by his stripes we are healed. Just claim that verse and you won't be sick. Because he wants you to be healed. They're transposing this. They're not telling you what this verse really means. This verse means that by his stripes we are healed from our sins. By his transgressions we are healed from our sins. By his stripes, by his blood, by him going to the cross, we are healed of our sins. There's so many people walking around saying there must be something wrong with me because I'm sick. There's something wrong with you if you're sick because you're sick. Amen. Amen. Try telling that to my father that walked for six and a half years with cancer. You go up to my dad and say, Ralph Rogers, if you were truly a Christian, if you were truly walking with Jesus, you would let his stripes heal you. My dad would tell you, first of all, you're full of garbage. Number two, he would tell you that the best six and a half years of my life, my Christian life, has been when I have been fighting cancer by the, by the inch. And you know why? It's given me opportunities to witness for Jesus like I've never had before in my life. I am right where Jesus wants me to be. I don't like cancer, but I'm satisfied that he's put me here. My life is right with Jesus, so therefore, he's using me to be of eternal value to people that, not, that don't know Jesus. That's what he would say. I've said this a long time ago. There was a lady in our church in, at Avondale Baptist, I'll never forget, back in Macon, Georgia, back in the 80s. And we had some whack job that was coming to our church, and he was a part of this, this kind of a movement. And he'd always walk around like he was so smart because he had degrees. He was about five degrees below zero. He was a nut. (laughs) And I will tell you this. He had the audacity to go up to a lady that was one of the most faithful, loving Christian women I've ever known in my life. She sang in the choir, and she was dying. And he had the audacity to go up to her room and say, why are you here in this hospital room? Why are you suffering from cancer? Why don't you just confess the sins that are in your life and why don't you just get healed by the name of Jesus? There wasn't nothing going wrong in this woman's life. She was right where God wanted her to be. She was suffering. Yes, she was. But she would say to you that the Christian life is not all about being on the mountain. The Christian life sometimes is about being in the valleys. Sometimes the Christian life is fighting hell by the inch. Sometimes the Christian life says, I'm going to get you in the valley because I can count on you in the valley. So even in the valley, you're not going to moan and groan. You're going to praise me. You're going to still tell people about me. And that's exactly what she was doing in that hospital bed. She was telling people about Jesus. And I went up there and she told me what that guy said. And I said, I going back to that man, I said, I want to tell you something. And I ain't going to say his name. I'll say this to you. Listen, don't you ever Don't you ever go back to that woman again. You know what? You need to pedal yourself right on down the road. You don't need to stay in here anymore. You know what? You're a false prophet. You know what? You're full of garbage. Get on down the road. You say, wasn't that extreme? Not extreme enough. I wasn't a Christian. I'd have told him why. I'd have really told him why to do. Came pretty close anyway. Amen. 
Listen, just because you're saved doesn't mean you're not going to get sick. Amen. Amen. You're going to get sick, okay? Take, eat your vegetables, you know, do all the right things, take your, take your vitamins, and don't be one of them Christians that say, well, I ain't going to take no vitamins or nothing like that, or I ain't going to eat my vegetables, you know? Hey, the doctor tells me things I ought to do because I'm diabetic, amen? If I go against those things, do you think I'm doing myself a favor? No. Hey, listen, hey, and I'm not against taking medicine sometimes when you need to have medicine, Amen. I thank the Lord for insulin. Amen. I do. You say, well, God was really your Savior, Pastor. You wouldn't need insulin. Well, guess what? You ain't got it right in your head. Do I believe that God gives knowledge to people to develop medicines? Yes. I do. Amen. If you want to take them, you take them. If you don't want to take them, that's okay. But what's right for you might not be right for somebody else. And just because like the COVID shot, People came up to me all the time during that, Pastor, did you get that shot? And I said to them in a very nice way, it ain't none of your business. You know why I said that? Because it wasn't none of their business. You know why I said that? Because there's not a right and wrong answer for me to stand on. Amen? If I was to say yes, I would offend this group. If I was to say no, I'd offend this group. Amen? Did some of y'all find yourself in a mess? That's why some people say, Pah. That pastor wouldn't even tell me where he had shot. It's none of your business. If I choose to get it, I choose to get it. If I don't, I don't. If I pray about it and God tells me yes, I take it. If he tells me no, I don't. Whatever it is, if you're right with Jesus, you're right with Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, it's enough of that. Now, they say, why should you deny yourself? Why should you deny yourself? Aren't you, the, aren't you number one? Hey, aren't you the way you need to be? Listen. What does deny their self mean? If we deny ourselves, as the Bible tells us to, what that means is simply this. You're not number one anymore. He is. That's what it means. If you deny yourself, that means that you are changing positions. You ask Jesus to come in to be your Lord and Savior. Now, he's not, now he is your Lord and Savior. You know what? Now he is number one in your life. You have changed positions. And what that means is that everything that you do, you ask him about it. Everything you do, you're in accordance with his word. The, the words that you say are in accordance with his word. The thoughts that you think are in accordance with him. In other words, he, you have slipped over in the drive over here in the car or the truck. You were driving, but when you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you gave him the steering wheel and you became a passenger. Amen. Amen. But the false people that are teaching the false gospel say, you don't need to give up the steering wheel. You don't need to be over here as a passenger. Still drive your life. Oh, you're capable. You're capable. Look at you. Look at what you've done. Look at what you've accomplished. Do you think that you can, do you think that you, you need to give that seat over to somebody else? Folks, let me tell you something. The greatest decision you can make in your life is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you, by saying, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you were not able to earn your way to heaven. And, and also, you are not capable of running your life. And you're not. And if you're not allowing Jesus to make, have the steering wheel in your life and to, and to run your life and to help you with everything in your life, folks, you are missing one of the greatest blessings in all the world. You are still a legend in your own mind, and you don't have to be that. Because you're not. Well, everybody says this about me. Everybody says this about me. God wouldn't say that about you. God would look at you and call you stupid. That's what it says. The Bible. I give you verses. Hey, if you're wise in your own eyes, you're stupid. You think you're wise? No, you're not. You're stupid when it compares to God's wisdom. Amen? Amen. Who would want to make their own choices in life when you don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes? Who would want to plan out your life for the next week when you don't know what the next week's going to be? I'd rather give my wisdom, whatever I have, over to God, let Him perfect it, and then give it to me. Because I know that when I'm doing what God wants me to do, that it's a perfect plan of God for my life. And by the way, when you and I go against the perfect plan of God for our life, we get in trouble every single time. 
Every mess I've ever been in in my life is because I've listened to Pastor Branson instead of listened to God. Amen. Every single mess. You know, every time I've listened to God is every single time I've never been in a mess. Amen? Think about it. Think about it in your mind. When was the last time you asked God for perfect wisdom? And you say, God, now that you've got the steering wheel of my life, now that I've received you as my Lord and Savior, I'm right with you. So, Lord, every decision I've given up to you. So you waited for him to tell you what was right. And then when he told you what was right, guess what? You made that decision at that particular time. And guess what? You were successful. That's what happens. But you know what happens a lot of times? We don't ask Jesus why because he is not on the same kind of time frame as we are. We want that answer right here and right now. We don't bother to ask, is that right or is that wrong? We say, I want it. So God says, fine. You want it that bad? There you go. You get it. And when you get it, you're going to know that you got it and I didn't give it to you. That's how it works. Number two, and I'm not going to finish today, so don't get all excited about it. Number two, let me give you another lie. <clears throat> Go ahead, ask me, your wishes will be granted. Look at John chapter 14 and look at verse 13. You can ask anything in my name and I will do it. Now that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. That's a real biggie right there. Is Jesus really saying in this scripture that I can ask anything that we want and he's going to do it? Is he really saying that every wish that I have in life is going to be granted? That's what pastors, false pastors, false teachers are going to tell you. You ask him anything you want and it's going to be granted. But what does this scripture really mean? Look what it says. You can ask for anything in. What does that say? It doesn't have your name in there. Amen? Well, I can ask for anything in Pastor Branson's name. And I will do it. Wow. That's what they say. It doesn't say that. In other words, they're giving you just enough, just enough truth to make it plausible. But it's not the truth. You ask anything in my name, that means according to me. That means according to my will. According to my perfect will for your life. And I will do it. So that my Father can be glorified. Have you ever prayed for things that didn't happen? Have you ever prayed for that? And God didn't answer it. Folks, if God doesn't answer your prayer, two things. One of them is maybe you're not right with God. He's not going to answer, to you, answer you to you're right with him. As far as your sins are forgiven, he has a clean, clean flow. Don't ask God for something if you're not right for him, with him. But if you are and you ask him and he doesn't give it to you, it is not his will at that particular time. Or it's not his will for your life, Period. He's trying to save you from something. He's trying to stop you from doing something that you're going to regret a thousand years from now. That's why I tell some folks sometimes, they're looking for a mate. Pray on it. Well, I did. I got on Christian Mingle. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Pray on it. Well, she looks good. He looks like this. They do this. They, hey, listen, listen, listen. Pray about it. God knows who they are. God knows the perfect fit to your life. Amen. Wait, wait, pray, pray. He says no. You say no. He says yes. Date. Amen. I don't want to wait that long. That's a devil's lie. Because the, devil, the Lord will give you somebody in his time and not yours. Well, I'm going to be old and gray. Well, so what? You may be even missing a couple of front teeth. But if it's God's will, if it's God's timing, 
Somebody's going to like somebody like you with no two front teeth. Amen. They may be blind, but they'll love you. Amen. I'm just kidding. God's not going to do things that are not according to his will. But people today and false prophets, they, they, treat, they want you to treat God like a, like a cosmic bellhop. I mean, you walk into a hotel. Bing, 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 bing. Some man or woman shows up. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Or you call up room service. Zim. Cheeseburgers there. Ooh. Prime rib sandwich. Listen, Jesus is not some cosmic bellhop. Amen. And people that preach like cosmic, uh, people that prosperity pastors that say, hey, look, he's God. He wants to give you everything that you won't know he doesn't. Some of those things you have no business having. Some of those things he doesn't want you to have. Amen. It's about his will, folks, and not about ours. Amen. That's what it's talking about. John chapter 5, verse 14 says, Be con- we, and we are confident that he hears us whatever we ask for anything that pleases him. Amen. He doesn't say he's going to give you everything that pleases you that you ask for. He says he's going to give you everything that pleases him. In other words, he's not going to give you everything you ask for. He's going to give you everything that you ask for that is according to his will. If you don't have it, it's not because Hey, it's it's because he doesn't want to give it to you. Amen? And that's the way you got to understand it. All right? I am going to get finished. Oh, hold on. All right. Give you line number three. It's all about stuff. That's a sign of being blessed. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. So if I have enough food and clothing, let us be content. That's a word this society doesn't know much about today. Content. People aren't content. Bible says that, hey, and these were the words of Paul. It says, listen, if I have enough food, if I have enough clothing, you know what? I'm going to be content. Prosperity pastors, false teachers will tell you this. The measure of how God is pleased with you is not determined by anything else other than it's determined by the stuff that he blesses you with. Listen, it's all about the scoring system. If you're super blessed materially, God must super naturally think that you're the greatest thing in the world. That you've got everything going for you. Listen, being closer to Jesus and watching Jesus change your name and to give you victories, folks, that's where life is really at. Amen. That's how you count valuableness in your life. What has God done for you? He has changed you from being this addicted to this and, and given you victory over that addiction. He has saved your marriage. He saved you from a lost eternity in hell. He has done this for you and this for your family and this for you. Pastor, he's done miraculous works in my life. That is called being blessed. Amen. It's not about material stuff. Well, God's blessed me. Look at my house. God's blessed me. Look at my car. Look at the money that I have in the bank. Look at that scratch off that I just won. God's blessed me. Look at the job. Look at what, look at, look at, look at. No, 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 and no. That's the world scoring system. The Lord's scoring system is this, that you are content with wherever he wants you to be. Amen. You're content. And you know something? If you're content in him, You can be anywhere you want to be in life. If you're right with God, you can sing his praises no matter where you're out at in life. And that includes being in a hospital room. Amen. 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 You say, Pastor, is that truth? That's truth, folks. Paul says, listen, I'm sitting here in a dungeon. They're not giving me anything to eat but molded bread. And I'm watching rats go across my feet 24-7. And you know what I'm doing? I am sitting here and I'm singing. Praises to my God. You know why? Because nothing could take the joy out of his life. He wasn't in a joyful circumstance, but you know what? He was at peace with his God. You know when I'm not content in my life is when I'm not right with Jesus. Amen? When you're not content in your life, you're not right with Jesus. 
Well, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Well, guess what? You're not right or right or right or right. You can't be right with Jesus and not be content at the same time. That's why this world runs on happiness. It doesn't run on joy. Happiness, as I've told you before, is to going to Walt Disney World. Reality is when you walk out and you've given all your money to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, this world is all about happiness. All about happiness. But they don't understand anything about joy. They don't understand it. Why? Because joy comes from knowing Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior. Folks, everything today is focused on materialism. My goodness, look at how some parents are raising their children today. You're only as good as your next pair of Nikes. You're only good as your next shirt that says this and this is. And your kids come home from school and they say, you know what? Look, all these kids at school have got all this going on and look at how you're dressing me. You need to tell your kids that joyful and happiness, I mean joyfulness is not found in their clothing. Joyfulness is found in Mom and Daddy are doing the very best that they can. And they're giving me the best that they can give me. Amen. Amen. Folks, people say, oh, I'm only as good as my next trip to the mall or my next Amazon purchase. Listen, gimme, 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 gimme. And if you're not getting, 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 prosperity pastors will tell you there's something wrong with you. What a terrible, terrible way to live. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them. And look at this next phrase. And their destruction has not been sleeping. I'm going to say this quote, and I want you to listen to me because I'm not misquoting this. I wrote this myself. I believe hell's hottest flames is for those who use the church in the name of Jesus to lead people astray. Do I believe there are a lot of false prophets going to hell? Absolutely. Do I believe what the Bible says that people that preach the word, either false or, or truth, are at a higher standard of judgment than everybody else. That's what the Bible teaches. You see, I have to be very careful about what I preach. I have to be very careful. You know why? Because God is holding me to a standard. It is absolutely unbelievable. Because I'm either leading y'all right in the truth of God's word or I'm leading you astray. And I believe some of the hottest places in hell are reserved for some of the people that I've even mentioned this morning. They do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They are leading people astray. They are leading people in a false security. They think they're saved, but they're not. Folks, that is wrong. They are getting people to say, send me this, send me this, send me this, so I can build more bigger houses. I can have bigger airplanes. Or I can do this and I can do that. And people are happy to give it to them because they're giving people what they think they need. But I will tell you this. It's like a deluded gospel. And just as I said before, what could be so cruel, unimaginably cruel, by deluding somebody's chemo, Pastor? I'll tell you something that's crueler than that. It's a false pastor. It's a false person on television or movies or whatever that stands before people that has a platform that is using that to give people a deluded gospel. Because one day they're going to end up in hell with the people, with the person that they've loved so much on this earth that has tickled their ears day in and day out. And they're going to have a question one day to that person. They're going to say, when they're in hell together, they're going to say, why didn't you tell me the truth? 
It's not because they didn't know it. It's because they weren't going to share it because they knew it wasn't going to be popular. It wasn't going to make them money. It wasn't going to make them the person, the person of the fame and all this stuff because they're all soaked in on who they are. And they know that the truth today, any other day, has not been popular. And they don't want to exchange that popularity for truth. I'll say you, tell you something about me today, and I'm closing. I could care less, and I mean this with every fiber in my body, I could care less if I'm popular to you. I could care less. I'd like to be, but I could care less. I'd rather be known as a pastor at the Point Church that never holds back, that always tells you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Amen. Amen. Why is that? Because I want you to be in heaven with me. Don't be looking for me in hell. I ain't going to be there. I'm going to be in heaven. And I do not want your blood on my hands. And I want to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if you're here today, and you're living a life, and you have things come into your life that are sinful, and you don't have any conviction about them, you better make your way down here to Pastor Brian here in just a moment. And you better check up and see if you really know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because you know what? If that's the way you live, you're not going to heaven. You're not going to heaven. You're going through the motions, but you're not going to heaven. You better make sure. And if you're a Christian here today, and you need to get some things right in your life, this is a place to come right here. Where you get things right with the Lord every single week. You live the life.